all right? I'm a bit grumpy, I'm very middle-aged, and my wife is going through the menopause. Now I've been having a look on YouTube at uh, how to do this, to try and become a bit more professional. And one of the things that they say you need is good lighting. You can get these illuminating rings that your mobile phone sits in the middle of, um, which gives you a good effect. That and a good location are two of the most important things. But as you can see, I'm in a dark kitchen with a big clock behind me and my shadow is probably on the wall. I'm still winging it, but I'm going to dive right on in. I do the shopping. I go once a week. This started a couple of years ago. Uh, my wife's previous job, she used to have to do a Saturday. Not every Saturday, but I took it upon myself to try and help out and get the shopping done. I quite enjoy it. I get up early, I get in, chuck all the stuff in the trolley and I get home. It's easy because we seem to buy the same stuff each week, which is another bone of contention, which I probably will address at another time. But for now, we'll just get on to the more important things. Um, like I say, I'm in and out. I don't hang about. I know what I'm looking for. Sometimes they'll move things. Now, being middle-aged, that can confuse me a bit, but, but I'll find it and I'm okay with that five ten minutes and, and I'm still home. Now my wife has got another job where she doesn't have to work a Saturday <clears throat> and she likes to come shopping with me now which is great because it gets us both out of the house and we get to spend some time together but there is a problem with that. Uh, the first one is we spend twice as much money and the second one is we seem to take about two to three hours during a shopping trip. The reason for this is my wife likes a bargain, which means she has to walk down every aisle looking at every shelf and looking at every item on those shelves. There's nothing wrong with a bargain, but we don't need it. But a bargain's a bargain, and if you're saving money, we'll get it anyway. Um, I've had a bit of an idea when it comes to shopping that I just would like to discuss now, which is this. There's lots of pensioners seem to congregate in these supermarkets. Now, nothing against the elderly because I'm halfway there myself. Um, but they seem to stop and have a conversation with each other. Now, they've probably seen each other all week because they've got nothing better to do. And they've probably had the same conversation each time. Starts off with just two of them, but before you know it, they seem to gather and multiply. The horde of the undead, as I like to call them. And seven or eight of them seem to appear from nowhere and you can't get by. So I've come up with a bit of an idea, which is this. They should make trolleys with a little electric bar on the front, uh, hooked up to a battery that the supermarkets can charge up overnight. Now I'm not suggesting that these things should be live all the time because that's just dangerous. You'll be just barging into people, everyone will be electrocuted and, and sometimes I wander off just to pick something up when there's a bit of a crowd there and I'll probably electrocute myself. So that's not a good idea. But what about if there was a little button on the bar? So when you come across one of these obstacles, you can just push the button and give them a little friendly nudge. You know, they'll, they'll soon disperse and you can get your shopping done. Now that goes for the, the hordes of the undead, but it also goes for the other hindrance in supermarkets, which are the mums with their children, two, three, four of them that are running round, rings around the trolley, all around the supermarket, shouting and screaming, and she ends up shouting at them and such on. And also the men who are out with their kids, uh, the men who are oblivious that they've even got children that seem to be wandering down while the kids are doing their own thing. So maybe we could give those a friendly little nudge with the old button as well. Um, I think it would work. So, I mean, if anyone ends up watching this from Dragon's Den or Alan Sugar, if he sees this, you know, bear it in mind. It's a good idea. Well, it's a lot better than the first idea I had, which was to put some sharp metal spikes on the bottom of the trolley. But um, that wouldn't work. It's dangerous. Um, there'd be blood everywhere for a start. 
that they'd be clear up on aisle three, four, five, and six on the tannoy, and the people working the tills would have to come down and mop up the floors. So you'd never be able to get your shopping out, would you? So let's forget that one. But maybe the electric one we should we should think of. Um, like I say, my wife likes to come with me sometimes. Like I say, it's great. Um, but apart from having to look at every single item on every single shelf, um, she also likes to look at the, when you go to the German supermarkets, they've got these weird and wonderful th items in the middle aisles, which is, could be anything. A pair of roller skates next to a microwave, next to a rubber dinghy, next to an electric organ, next to compression tights. Nice to see, nice to have a look, but let's not waste our time. But what my wife does like, well, there's no other way of saying it. She likes a candle. She loves a candle. Now, we live in the modern world. We've got electricity. We've got LED lights. We've got energy saving lights everywhere. But on a Saturday night, our living room is like a dungeon from Game of Thrones. Smells lovely though. The other thing she likes is sticks in bottles of perfume or diffusers, I think is the proper word, but they're basically sticks in a bottle of perfume. Um, nothing wrong with that, they're lovely, they make the house smell lovely. Downstairs toilet, we've got at least two in there. But when she is looking at these items on the shelves, she has to smell it. Again, nothing wrong with that, you, 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 know, you need to know what you're buying. But one or two I could understand. But then I've got to smell it. It's nice, isn't it? Yes, lovely. Second one, ooh, what about that one? Lovely. Third one, mm, yeah, pretty much the same as the other one. But after about 17 of these, not only can I not smell the difference between them, but I've also lost the will to live. Not only that, but these pensioners that are chatting amongst themselves, there's 20 to 30 of them now, we're not leaving that supermarket. And if we do, we're not getting out of the car park. That's shopping. Now my wife is going through the menopause. Like I said before, it's an awful thing, it's an awful thing to watch. It's an awful thing to go through. Um, she has become unconfident, her low self-esteem, uh, anxiety is through the roof. Um, lots of different, her body's affected, her, she's ditzy, she's forgetful. And it, it's awful to see because she's a kind and beautiful woman, sexy, and I love her, love her very much. And to see your partner, wife, girlfriend go through this, it is awful. And all, all we can do as men is to try and be as sympathetic as we can, even though we haven't got a clue, but be as sympathetic and as understanding and try and appreciate what they are going through. Patience is what I would say is what we need. Because um, it affects them in lots of ways. Like I say, we'll, we'll look at this another time in more depth, how we can help there and try to be more understanding. But it is awful to witness and go through with them. Um, and when I say go through with them, us men go through our own sort of thing as well. Uh, it doesn't compare at all, not in the slightest. But I've got a couple of friends um, that are going through what I could only describe as a midlife crisis. Now, like I say, it doesn't change their bodies like the menopause does, but it does affect their minds. And it's quite sad to see when you see a 50 year old bloke trying to dress and act like he's 18 again. Well, it's pathetic, really. Uh, luckily, I've not gone through that and, and, and I can't see myself going through that because I'm aware of it. Um, but you never know. Um, but the one thing I am going through at the moment, which I'd like to talk about is, uh, it's what I call grumpophobia. Now, agrophobia is, is a proper illness, and it's people that are scared or fear the outside or open spaces. Um, now, I'm not scared to go out of the house, and I don't fear open spaces, but I just can't be bothered to leave the house, and that sounds ridiculous. I know it does, I, I, and, and I'm aware of it, um, because my wife makes me aware of it. But I work a week, I travel around a lot, and when I get home at the weekends, I have a bottle of wine, sometimes two, and watch a film, and I'm happy in the comfort of my own surroundings. 
um, but it ha or it has and is becoming a bit of an issue which I need to address. And again, I'll probably talk a bit more in depth about this at another time. Um, anyway, I think we've pretty much covered that I'm still grumpy, still middle-aged, and my wife is still going through the menopause. Um, so for now, I think I'll leave it at that. Ta-da! <laughs>